I want to talk about Genesis 19. Genesis 19 is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Though most people are very familiar with this story, it's actually one of the most misunderstood stories in the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah is the story of how God destroyed the two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. We see in this story that God sends his angels to the city to get Lot and his family and get them out before he destroys the city. While they are there, the people of Sodom come to Lot's house and they say, we saw that you invited these people into your home. Send them out to us because we want to rape them. Now, typically, when Christians talk about this story, they say Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of all of the sexual sin. For example, those people banging on Lot's door. They point at this and they say, God hates sexual sin, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what's going to happen to America and all these places if we let this sexual sin go. And so this is one of the arguments that Christians will preach and use to talk about how we need to make homosexuality illegal and other stuff like that. Now, I am not arguing that God is okay with sexual sin, not at all, but that is not what happened here. Most people don't understand what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah because most people get their information from teachers and preachers and the church and Christian culture rather than from the Bible. When we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and when we look at America, we can see a lot of the same things. In Sodom and Gomorrah, there was this perverseness where people were turned over to just this sexual perversion and immorality that was just controlling them and consuming them. And in America, we see the country headed in that same direction. And yes, it's true that there is a parallel there. And I think the root is exactly the same. And I think we are on the same path as Sodom and Gomorrah. But the problem is Christians look at Sodom and Gomorrah and they look at America and they say, we need to stop this path. We need to get off of this path. And so the answer is we need to outlaw homosexuality. We need to fight this sexual perversion with legal laws to make it so that we don't have people doing these things. They focus it all on this, on this political thing and they're missing the whole point. How are they missing the point? Well, let's look at Romans 1. In Romans 1, Paul talks about sexual perversion. But he says that the sexual perversion is actually a result of people already being under wrath. Paul is saying, because people sin, God turns them over to having a corrupt mind and turns them over to their lusts and they become people who are very perverted sexually. They want things that they should not want. God never intended them to want those things, but he hands them over to it because of sin. And we can see with Sodom and Gomorrah and we can see with America that oftentimes this is not just individuals, but entire cultures. He will hand over a people group because that people group is choosing to sin. But when the church is pointing at that perversion and they're saying that is the reason, they're actually missing the point because scripture tells us that something else caused God to hand them over to that in the first place. So what is that thing? Because that is what needs to be addressed. The perversion is part of the wrath. People are under wrath because of the perversion. What is it that caused God to hand Sodom and Gomorrah over to that? Because it's probably the same thing happening in America. Scripture tells us why God destroyed Sodom. It doesn't tell us about Gomorrah specifically, but it does tell us exactly what Sodom did that caused God to hand them over to their sin and ultimately to destroy them with fire from heaven. And when we are looking at America or looking at any other country today and we are seeing them on the same path, we need to recognize the sin of Sodom and not just assume we know it because of this one story. This story does not say what Sodom's sin was. It shows some of the sin that was in Sodom, but it does not say this is why I'm destroying them. It just tells us a story. 
hundreds of years after that happened, God sent a prophet to the nation of Israel. And this prophet was telling the people of Israel, specifically the people of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, that they had become worse than Sodom. He was saying, you guys are even worse than that city that I destroyed. You've become so much worse than them. And then he says, through that prophet, why he destroyed Sodom in the first place. This was the sin of your sister, Sodom. She and her daughters were proud and had plenty of food and lived in great comfort, but she did not help the poor and needy. That is why God destroyed Sodom. Now look at America. Do you see a similarity? Because I do. We have comfort, we have ease, we have food, we have plenty, but we don't really do much to help the poor and needy. We tend to do just enough to not feel guilty. And ultimately, I'm not really pointing the finger at the unbelievers in the country, I'm pointing the finger at all the Christians in the country. Because if you guys are going to insist that America is a Christian country, then you're the ones who are going to bear the, the blame. You're saying America is a Christian country, but you're not doing the things that Christians are supposed to be doing. Because Christians are supposed to be helping the poor and needy, not living in comfort and ease and having plenty of food while ignoring the needs of all those around them. If America is headed on the same path as Sodom, it is because of the same sin as Sodom. It's because America is proud, absolutely. Has plenty of food, absolutely. Great comfort, absolutely. But does not help the poor and the needy. Does not get them out of their situation. Yes, sometimes we hand them a dollar while we drive by. But we don't sacrifice our lives to go help those in need. That is what Jesus told the church to be doing. The church is supposed to be out there meeting the needs of people, helping people, giving up everything for people. But instead, we have a country that proudly declares itself to be a Christian country and is totally ignoring the need. Now, I will say there are some people out there who are addressing it, some people who are trying to do something, but there are a lot of people sitting on their hands doing nothing, thinking that they are worshiping Jesus, thinking they are serving him, thinking they're obeying him, and they're not. Ezekiel 16, talking about Sodom, is a warning for Americans. It's a warning for Christians. God destroys those who do not help the poor and needy. He cares a lot about them. If you are a child of God, you will care about them too. And again, this is one of those stories that if you just read it by itself, you're not going to understand it. You need to be familiar with what all of Scripture says, because the explanation for the story in Genesis is found in Ezekiel. But also, if you become familiar with what all of Scripture says, like just what in general does it say, and you become familiar with it by reading it, not by asking other people to explain it to you, you're going to find that on almost every single page of the Bible, God tells us that we need to care about the poor and the needy. I mean, it is all throughout. And yet it's something that so many Christians don't do. If you are going to say you follow God, you need to do the things he says to do. If you are a follower of Christ, you need to do the things he says to do. It's really that simple.